Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to episode one of the Best Day Ever podcast. This is a podcast about all things crafty and a glimpse into my little crafty corner of the world. My name is Trisha, and I'm your host. I can be found on Instagram and Ravelry as Tie Dye Diva. And show notes can be found just below the screen here on YouTube. And I'll try very hard to link to many of the things I discussed today. Well, welcome. I guess since this is the first episode, I should tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I live just outside of Washington, D.C. in the state of Maryland and uh, with my husband and my two sons. And uh, the reason I decided to start this podcast? Well, when it comes to crafting, the only thing I love more than crafting is talking about crafting and sharing my love of crafting with uh, everyone. And so this was just, uh, in a lot of ways, I feel a natural progression into uh, my crafting adventure, I guess you could say. It really has been a whirlwind the past, I would say, seven years since I started back knitting in earnest. So many wonderful things have happened. So many uh, wonderful people and friendships have been forged. And it just keeps getting better and better. And so I'm just very excited to be able to uh, share with as many people as possible um, my crafting journey. And I personally really enjoy podcasts. I, this, to me, there's nothing like sitting back with my knitting and a cup of tea or a glass of wine and watching some of my favorite podcasters. And, um, I have been so inspired by other podcasters and many of my project ideas come from other podcasters. And so I hope to be able to inspire a few other people through some of the work that I do. Um, I knit, I crochet, I, uh, garment sew. I just recently learned how to quilt. And when I say recently, I mean within the past, um, two years. Um, I d we'll definitely talk about quilting, maybe not on this episode, but definitely in future episodes to come. Let's see, what else do I do? I am learning how to be, um, how to have a green thumb, learning how to garden. I love to cook. Don't cook as much as I used to, um, but every once in a while I get in the kitchen just to prove to myself I still got it. Um, let's see what else. So mainly, mainly knitting um, and sewing and crochet is what I'm into right now. Um, why did I decide to name this craft, this, this podcast, the best day ever podcast? I'll talk a little bit about that towards the end of this show. So, without further delay, let's get right on into um, some of the things we're going to talk about today. Um, I'll first tell you about the shawl that I'm wearing, and I will get into uh, some of the projects that I'm currently working on, and I will also show you a few things that I have acquired um, as far as acquisitions in the past um, few weeks or so. So, does that sound good? So just sit back and relax, and I hope you enjoy the things that I'm about to share with you. So first of all, um, the shawl that I'm wearing. And I will be referring to my phone because um, I don't have any notes. I'm kind of like flying by the seat of my pants today. But uh, this is a shawl by Isabel Kramer. And the name of the shawl is, I believe it's Moomoo's. M-U-H dash M-U-H. And of course, you can find the shawl on Ravelry. I'm trying to pull up the project page for the shawl, and I certainly hope this will, this is not going to come through. So, let me just show it to you, the shawl that I've made. I knit this shawl about, let's see, what is on my project page? When did I knit this shawl? This shawl was knitted uh, doo, 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 doo. I finished it December 21st, 2014. So this has been off my needles for quite some time. And I love garter stitch. To me, there's nothing like the meditative. You would be able to see this even better if I turned it around the right way, right? <laughs> So this is um, it's basically just a two-color shawl, two-color stripes, and with a lace uh, border. 
that goes into more garter stitch on the end. And I don't know if I mentioned that this was knit in a bulky yarn. So it is a super, super fast knit. And the yarn that I chose to knit this with is Neighborhood Fiber Company Studio Chunky. Now the pattern calls for 503 yards of bulky weight. And the pattern uh, lists actually three colors, but I did my shawl in two colors. So again, this is Moo Moo's by Isabel Kramer. Uh, and as I'm looking at my project page, I really, I only used about 400 yards to knit this shawl. And uh, it's knit on a size 6.5 millimeter, uh, two and a half US needle. So if you are looking for a warm, cozy shawl, highly, highly recommend this. And today in the DMV, it is so, it's just gross out. It's dreary and it's cloudy and it's rainy and drizzly. And for some reason, I am freezing. I've got the fireplace on in front of me. I've got a cup of hot tea. And you could probably tell from my voice that I'm definitely getting over it. Still trying to get over that plague, that bug that's just been getting everybody this year. So that's why my voice is a little bit raspy. So again, Moo Moo Shawl by Isabel Kramer. Go knit you one. Okay, so next up, let's get into some of the current projects that I'm working on. This project here is something I'm very, very proud of because it's actually a hat that I'm working on for my sister-in-law's mother who is currently in, um, in cancer treatment. And uh, she reached out to me and complimented me on my Instagram feed and how much she really enjoyed seeing the projects that I posted on Instagram. And she asked me if I would knit her mom a hat. And I was more than honored to do that. And um, I said, well, you know, one of my goals for 2018 was indeed to um, design a pattern. And I just thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to do that. So this is the hat that I am working on designing. It's just, it is a beanie with a cuffed border and some seed stitching going on after that and some rows of ribbing and seed stitch. And I'm actually working on the decreases right now. The yarn that I'm using um, for this is uh, Plucky. Plucky Knit a Trusty, which is a worsted weight merino. And the color that I chose is Sounds Like a Carnival. And the, really this camera doesn't do this color much justice. It is gorgeous. It is a bright, not cobalt blue, more like a true, really, really fun uh, royal blue. She said her mom loves, loved greens and blues. And I have a lot of green and blue in my stash. So... This is the hat that I'm knitting up for my sister-in-law's mother, and I have not given it a name, and um, I don't know, I might end up posting it to Ravelry as a, as a pattern someday. Um, like I said, I did, I've set a lot of goals for 2018, and one goal was to design a pattern of some sort. So even if it doesn't get posted, I think that that definitely counts as a, um, as a goal met if I actually get this pattern uh, finished which is definitely a goal because um, she wants it for her mom so hopefully by the next time I record I will have a finished hat as well as um, a pattern so stay tuned for that and this is just hanging out in um, a Dollar Cube project bag I believe I picked this up while I was on vacation in the Outer Banks of North Carolina um, they have a wonderful yarn shop there and I cannot think of the name of it right now, but that's where I picked up this fun bag. Very tie-dye-ish, I would say. So, that's one project that I am working on. Let's see, what else do I have here? One thing I like to share about when I plan my projects, I have kind of like a little system. A lot of people say that I seem to get a lot of projects done, I'm, I get to finish things. I really don't think so. I, they think I'm a really, really fast knitter and they just think I'm just cranking out project after project. But I don't think that's the case. I really wish I could do more. 
but I do have somewhat of a system. I try to have one long-term project on the, on the needles. And for me right now, that long-term project is the um, sock yarn memories blanket or the memory sock yarn blanket. And I'll show that to you on the next uh, podcast. It's actually right over there in, in the corner, but I don't want to get up and show it to you. Um, so that's my long-term project. Then I try to always have a sweater on the needles, which I'm about to show you. Um, I try to have a pair of socks on the needles. I just finished a pair of socks and I cast on immediately for another pair of socks. And those are sitting over there on my couch. And I've just got about that much done on the um, cuff of that sock. So I won't show that to you, but I will hopefully have a lot more progress um, done on that. Or maybe even a completed pair by the next time I podcast. So long-term project that takes maybe about a year or longer. Um, a sweater a pair of socks, and usually something for the neck, a cowl, a shawl, maybe a lace shawl. Um, and then that still allows time for other little projects, quick, quick projects like hats. Um, sometimes you just need that palette cleanser, something really quick to, um, to break up the monotony of the longer projects. And so, you know, you can get in a pair of fingerless mitts or a hat or maybe a toy or some other small project. So that's just my little tip for how I roll as far as getting my projects done. So this is the sweater that I currently have on the needles. I did not follow a pattern for this sweater. I basically decided to do a, um, a top-down raglan and I am working with a worsted weight Surrey Merino and Alpaca. This is Plymouth Surrey Merino and Alpaca. And I am holding this together with a strand of Rowan Kit Silk Haze Lace. So the, the, uh, the white is just a basic natural cream color. And the Rowan Kit Silk Haze, the color is uh, marmalade. It is orange, which just happens to be my favorite, favorite color. And so, like I said, I just cast on, I believe it was 80 stitches that I cast on, and I just started my raglan uh, increases. And as I just kept trying it on, as I went along, let me take off this scarf, so, well, I guess it's okay to leave it on. So I kept trying it on, seeing when it would be time for me to separate for the sleeves. And as I was about an inch away from separating for the sleeves, then I started to do my increases on every row. Um, just for the front and backs alone. And what that does is it prevents, hopefully, it will prevent the sleeves from being too large, yet giving me more space in the bust area where I really, really need it. So it's coming along really good. I have separated for the sleeves, and I am probably about um, past the bust line on this sweater. I wish there were a vision because this is so soft. And luxurious and I'm really really enjoying knitting it um, I would say that with the lace and the worsted weight this is probably knitting up to be a bulky or an errand I have not done a wraps per inch yet but um, it's going really really quick the needles that I'm using are zing and the size that I'm using I believe it's a US US 10 6.0 millimeter needle and these zings are wonderful. I was actually able to snag these at my um, local um, Michaels was it Michaels or either AC Moore was where I was actually able to snag these. It was a funny thing. We were at the Wegmans at our knit group. Wegmans is a, a grocery store that has this wonderful lounge area behind the grocery store. So it's like the best of both worlds, a place to lounge and knit and food and coffee galore. It's just, it's wonderful. So at one um, knit night, I went there and um, some of the girls were just so excited about these Zing needles. And so one of them had actually left the knit night to go pick up some of the needles. And I didn't want to leave knitting to go get some, even though I really wanted them. But you better believe the very next morning I woke up and I ran out there and yes, they had some left, but only in the larger sizes. So that was probably about a year and a half ago, and I'm just getting to use them. But 
I believe these are by Knit Pro, but they're, they're, they're wonderful. I think they're about as close to signature needles as you're going to get. So, um, and you can find them pretty much all over the webs. So hopefully I will have this sweater maybe completed or almost completed by the next time I record. Uh, most of my sweaters have been knit top down. And the reason for that is because um, I love being able to try on my clothes as I go. Um, and you have that freedom of of just creating something. I don't know what the body of this is going to be like. I might end up doing something really fun around the bodice. I may decide to flare it out for an A-line or I may just keep it straight and boxy. But when you knit top down, you it kind of gives you that um, that flexibility to be able to try on and make adjustments either in size or in your pattern. So that's really, really fun. And this is hanging out in a project bag that I sewed a few months back. And I just used some, I believe this is an Alexander Henry print. It's like a crafting print. There is yarn and needles and pin cushions and just a really fun abstract pattern on here. Um, and the tutorial that I used to make this bag was um, from the Crafty Gemini. Uh, she has amazing tutorials. I don't know how she does it all actually, but um, I will definitely link to the YouTube tutorial on how I made this bag. It is fully lined, and I also added a pocket on the inside, which is not a part of the of the tutorial, but if you sew, then you could easily just add a pocket right on the inside. So I love this bag. And the reason I decided to make this bag, I'm not a maker of bags for sale. Um, maybe in the future I might be able to... Um, to become skilled enough to sell bags. But one issue that I have with project bags, and I have many, is that when I'm knitting a sweater, I never have a bag that's large enough to fit all of my yarn and the sweater, especially when the sweater starts to become a certain size. And so just look at the size of this bag. I, I, don't, I didn't even um, measure before I cut. I just took a, I think I had about a yard of fabric and I just kind of eyeballed it because it's just a rectangle that it starts out with. But again, I will definitely link to the um, to the video so you can see how it was made. But I've got more than enough room in this bag for my sweater, my yarn, and still more and more room for the sweater to grow. So that's that's how I decided. That's why I decided to make this bag here. And I also lined it with some quilting, um, some quilting batting. Not lined it, I interfaced it with some fusible quilting batting. So it's extra soft and squishy. I think that's all I have to say about that. Actually, there's a lot to be said about this sweater, being that I'm not following a pattern. And I hope to share with you more on um, how, if you're interested, you could make your own um, top-down sweater without having to use a pattern. There are definitely a lot of resources online for that. And um, I'm going to try to find out what those are and share those with you. Next up, next up, I will show you another project. So this project actually has not been cast on yet, but I'll show it to you anyway. And this is also hanging out in another project bag that I made. Um, using the exact same tutorial, but I decided to um, do a two-tone. And the reason for that is because, as you can see, I have been bitten by the love of pins bug. I love my project pins. Not project pins, my, what do you call these? Just my crafty pins, representing all the things about all the crafters and makers that we love. So hanging out in this bag are the makings of a shawl whose name is escaping me. Hold tight. Thank goodness for Ravelry, right? Let's go to my queue or to my projects. 
and uh, this this project is called the sky's the limit and this is a plucky knitter pattern and she just released it a couple of weeks ago and she describes it as a knit along a mystery knit along with one clue so when you buy the pattern everything you need to complete the pattern is on that very first um when you buy the pattern, everything you need to make the pattern is right there, even though she calls it a mystery middle song. Next time I record, I promise I'm either going to be in better lighting or I'm going to have the patterns printed out for you because on this screen, it just doesn't show up well. So basically, Sky's the Limit is a, is a wrap. It's knit on the bias and it's uh, stripes and textures and I believe there's some garter stitch, some areas of stockinette stitch. And I believe she named it the sky's the limit because really the sky is the limit when it comes to choosing what colors you want to use. So let me see if I can get all five of my colors in hand. So you can see what I chose. Most of these are primo worsted. And if you know me and if you follow me on Instagram and Ravelry, then you know how much I love my plucky. So we've got this beautiful gold here. This beautiful green. This is coming out to be black, but it's actually, oh, it is. It's a dark gray. <laughs> it is a gray. Dark gray. I believe that could be a one hit wonder, meaning it doesn't have a name. I do know what this is. This is called CC Bloom. So this is a beautiful pinky orange. And uh, a small batch color. I believe it's a small batch one. When Plucky first started doing um, speckles, this was the very first one that she did. And uh, I will be using this beautiful blue green, which is vintage icebox. So, all five of these will be my Sky's the Limit shawl. And I hope to have a lot of progress done on this by the next time I record. I think this is going to be a quick project because it is knit on a size 8 needles. So, I'm really looking forward to this. Another fun thing about this project bag, I'm kind of like on a, a camouflage kick. Um, fashionable camouflage should we say and um, so my, as I said my favorite color is orange so one morning I said you know I wonder if there's an orange camouflage fabric out there so I went to look and I could not find this is the closest thing that I could find to an orange uh, camouflage and I believe this is a Kathy Fassett um, print and uh, I was able to find this bright colored camouflage ribbon that matches it perfectly. Although I might end up changing the ribbon into more of a cording for this drawstring. We'll see. Again, a really large, large project for us larger, larger women because we need them, right? Okay, so the last project that I'm going to show you I'm almost halfway sitting on are is a washcloth that I started I am participating in the yarn hoarder uh, dishcloth challenge and um, I'm really enjoying it I'm really really enjoying it so the goal is to be able to knit at least one washcloth or dishcloth a week um, and so that by the end of the year, you'll have tons and tons to be able to do whatever. Give them as gifts, or you can give them as give them as gifts throughout the year. I'm actually using mine right now and giving them as gifts throughout the year. This cotton that I'm using for this particular one is, I got it from Hobby Lobby, and I'm almost certain it is that I love this cotton. But it's really soft and really fun to work with. I am not as... Um, good with crochet as I am with knitting but I think I'm doing pretty good with this and I love this stitch it's just a basic two row repeat 
and uh, let's see what else can I say about this it's going really fast I just I did this in just a few minutes once I wrapped my brain around the actual um, stitch so yeah these are going this is going really really good and I mean we've only got a few more days left in this month so I got to get moving if I want to be on track for for the month and this is hanging out in another fun little bag that I made this is a bento more well, let me say my take on a uh, a Japanese a bento bag I love the um, the fringe supply bento bags, but I'm not crazy about the um, the the, the prints. I'm I'm a real sucker for these ethnic African prints, and I have a lot of them. So I'm actually I'm working on um, this is the first one I I made. It needs a lot of work. <laughs> there are a lot of imperfections on, but for the first one not bad at all so I'm working on this pattern um, so that I can be able to share some of these with some of my knit friends and who knows maybe even be able to sell some of them at some point but I think I'm quite a ways off from there but stay tuned on that and this smells good because I have a lavender sachet in there so that wraps up um, the actual projects that I'm working on. Um, let's talk about some of the things that I've recently finished. So this is a cowl and I am super excited about this because this is my very first brioche project that I was able to complete. This pattern is called the Pearl Soho. It's from Pearl Soho and it is called it is called Gina's Brioche Hat and Cow. So I decided to do the cow. I used a size 8 US 8 needle for this and um, basically scraps. Honestly, I didn't think that I was going to do as good as I did. So I just picked up some worsted weight yarn I had hanging around and cast on. And I've been trying to do brioche for a very long time, unsuccessfully. And there was something that just clicked this time. So I'm telling you, if you want to, you have been wanting to try brioche and you keep messing up the way I kept messing up, don't give up. Just keep trying it because once you get it, it is so much fun just like everyone is saying and I wish there was Villavision because this is so squishy and so springy and so soft so this is also knit in Plucky Knitter Trusty and I believe this green is some more mice decay I had left over and this uh, white that I finished off the top is a Plum Street Fiber Arts I'm not sure if Plum Street Fiber Arts is still dying or not but look at the color on there. This um, I had left over from a sweater I knit a couple of years ago. And it's a worsted weight speckle. I do have some mistakes in there, as you can see. Or that could just be from where I weaved in. But yes. Um, I'm going to link to the YouTube video. Um, the person who this video I found to be the most helpful. I believe um, she calls herself the unapologetic knitter on youtube i will definitely um, confirm that and get back to you her videos and also um oh i'm drawing a, a, a blank there were there's another person who is the designer of all the beautiful fade patterns andre oh my goodness hold tight i should definitely know who this is I cannot believe that I am blanking out on one of my favorite designers hold tight I know you guys out there just screaming the name the find your fade designer of the find your fade Shaw Andrea Maori of course her videos and the unapologetic knitters videos truly truly helped me so much so, um, again, if it's brioche or really any knitting technique for that matter that you really want to try, 
but it's just not working out for you, don't give up. Just keep trying because it's so worth it. If this, oh my goodness, this brioche is so, so worth it. And let me try this on for you so you can see. It's really, it's really simple. Um, it's just a tube. But on a blustery, cold day, this is going to be so warm and cozy. You just put your wool coat on and cozy up to this. And just have that pop of color sticking out. That is so beautiful. I love it. Let me get another cup of sip of tea. Mm, that's so good. That's actually a rose tea that I am I'm drinking. We have a tea company in the state of Maryland. It's called the Eastern Shore tea company i believe that's the name of it i will link to it but this particular flavor is called victorian rose and it's wonderful and i've got some honey and lemon in there to help with my throat and of course that this is my very first jenny the potter mug and i love it okay next finished object is a pair of socks that I finished a couple of weeks ago. This is also Plucky Knitter yarn. This is her Plucky Feet base. And I decided to finish off the heels, toe, and cuff with some bellow fingering I had left over from another project. And I don't know if you can tell, but I have stranded or held together the Plucky Feet on just the, the, um, the leg part of the sock with some mohair and silk. Can you see that halo? I am a seriously obsessed right now with holding mohair with my projects. As you can see from the sweater that I'm working on, it just elevates a project and just does something for a project that it, I think it stabilizes it, just creates this wonderful um, stable fabric, but it also just gives it a, just a luxurious feel. So I decided to try it with my socks and I absolutely love the way they turned out. So I hope I get to wear these this uh, before it starts to get warm again or I may just put them aside for, um, for next winter. So I'm doing pretty good with my goal of knitting one pair of socks per, um, per month. That's one pair finished and then I had another pair. Yes. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably have already seen these. But these are my socks that I knit from the Andrea Sue Knits Sock Blank. This might very well be my most favorite pair of socks. I love the way um, these came out. Let me show you, first of all, how much of this sock blank I have left over. Look at that. So after knitting a full size uh, pair of adult socks, I still have quite a bit left over. So this is what the sock blank looked like before. And that's what it looks like knitted up. I think it's like an abstract version of what was in the original sock blank. So that's really, really nice. With the other pair of socks, um, generally what I do, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that with the pair of socks I just showed you here lately, I've been knitting them on a US one and a half uh, needle. I like to use the higher, higher sharps because they are sharp and they are, uh, they're also lightweight. So I just feel like I have a lot more control using them, using the magic loop method, top down with an afterthought heel. And I will also be linking to my favorite tutorial for an afterthought heel that doesn't require you to pick up any stitches. I love that. Okay. So, two more finished objects I wanna show you. So, this is really, really warm. This is even warmer than the shawl that I had on. Whew, just wanna take that off. 
So maybe about a year ago, we went out to visit my um, good friend, uh, Sandy, in a uh, in uh, Washington State, and she had knit the Alexandra's airplane scarf, which is a pearl Soho pattern. And I wanted to knit that scarf so badly. The cowl, is it a cowl or I think it can be either a scarf or a cowl. I wanted to knit it in orange. This is Roman Kid Silk Haze. But I honestly ran out of steam. <laughs> I just was not enjoying the process. And I truly believe that if you're not enjoying a knitting project, to just not do it because there's just so many other things that you can do. So I decided to um, stop this project and use this yarn. This is the same yarn that's being held double with the Plymouth Surrey Merino alpaca on the sweater I showed you earlier. And so I just stopped knitting and I said, you know what, this is going to turn into just a little luxurious little cowl for me to just wear over my head, maybe on a cool spring night with a denim jacket. Isn't that pretty? Or when the sweater is finished, imagine how beautiful this will look with the sweater. I think it will play off on the colors that are in the sweater. Since I said, like I said, this is being uh, stranded with the worsted weight. And can you see the beads that I have going on there? So I think I kind of, it kind of worked out. So I actually have another cow, another project. Mm, and it smells good too. Tough woolens is what I usually use to block my um, projects with. And real quick while I'm talking about blocking projects, um, and while I'm talking about Surrey, not Surrey, while I'm talking about um, mohair and silk, I know that with mohair it is a love-hate thing. I happen to love it. Like I said, I think when it's combined with silk, it really does something to elevate a project. If you're allergic, you're just allergic and you, there's not a lot you can do about that. But one thing I noticed is that after I soaked this cow, it definitely wasn't as, as the, the fibers weren't moving around or as fluffy as they were. When I was knitting it, I was getting a little bit of irritation in my nose while I was working with it, but now it feels really good. I just, it does, I think it soaking it and blocking it did something to relax those fibers. So, I really love this. Looking forward to wearing that. So I'll just keep that on for now. Uh, and I have one more finished object. Another cow. I don't know how this happened that I ended up finishing all these cows. <laughs> But this is the Camo Chic Cow from the Plucky Knitter also. So I guess if you've been wondering who my favorite indie dyer is, yes, it is Sarah and Haley of the Plucky Knitter. Look at this. Look at the squish and the bounce in this cow. I held three strands of yarn together. A sweater, Plucky sweater, which is a DK weight in like totally, which is the, which is the color. Um, I used a plucky feet, which is another small batch color and I can't remember the name, but if you see some reds and deep browns, that's what that feet is. I will, if you look on my Ravelry page, you will definitely see the name of the color. And the third skein was Aaron Waite. And that was the Plucky Knitter Traveler Erin. And that was also a small batch color. This cowl is so amazing. So let me just try this on. I would definitely be prepared come next winter. So look at that. Oh my goodness. So luxurious. So warm. So cozy. And so chic. Very camo chic. So I think I'm going to have to either buy or need, maybe even make me a green jacket to match this. Or maybe maybe a khaki jacket. Nah, we'll do the green. Ooh, that's looking really good with my new painted walls. Hopefully the next time I podcast, I'll be either in my crafting room or I'll have some art on the walls. We just painted. Not long. Well, we didn't paint. A, my wonderful niece and her friend came and painted for us a couple of weeks ago and we have yet to get the pictures on the wall. 
So hopefully the next time I podcast, I'll either be in my craft room or here in the same spot, but with a better backdrop. So this is the camel she cow from the plucky knitter. So that's it for the finished objects. Let's talk just a little bit about um, a few acquisitions that I have acquired in the past few weeks. And as promised, I will um, tell you a little bit about why I decided to name this podcast the best day ever. Okay. Let's see here now. One thing that came in the mail I'm super excited about is this here. This yarn is a collaboration between uh, Christy Glass Knits and the Long Island Yarn Company. Let me make sure I get this correct. It is a limited edition American Life with Christy Glass Knits. And I want to tell you what the, here it is right here. The composition of this yarn, it's a 70% U.S. alpaca and a 30% merino. Each skein is 100 yards. This was a specialty yarn that you could only get at Vogue Knitting Live in New York back uh, last month. I had the privilege of going to Vogue Knitting Live, and um, I knew I wanted to get this yarn, but I underestimated um, how difficult it would be to get it because when I got to the booth it was all sold out and I think I got to the booth it was Saturday and by Saturday afternoon it had all sold out and so but I did get a chance to see it um Shanika Clark of the Mika Mika no it was it's Knit Night with Mika podcast was kind enough to show me hers and I fell in love with it but I was so sad because I knew I wasn't going to be able to get it because it had sold out but then um, I believe it was Christy Glass who did a quick video to say that Long Island Yarn um, and Farm was going to do another run of it. And so I quickly jumped on it and did a pre-order. And I'm not disappointed. This will probably end up being a really squishy cowl. It's so pretty. It's so, so pretty. So thank you, Christy Glass and Long Island Yarn and Farm. For this fun acquisition the next thing that i want to show you is this skein of yarn that came in the mail from beaver slide dry goods so the reason i decided to order this is because of this pattern that i saw on ravelry and hopefully i put it in my queue so i'll be able to pull it up quickly this year, I'm really working on, among so many other things, so many knit goals I had for the year. But I really want it to, um, to knit as many sweaters as possible. And uh, there was one sweater that came across my eye when I was looking on Ravelry. Can you tell I'm like hesitating? <laughs> It's a Hohi Locatelli pattern, and don't we love Hohi Locatelli? So the, co the the sweater that I would love to knit is called the Ranch Coat. This was put out last month, January 2018, and the this yarn, Beaver Slide Dry Goods Merino Mohair 8020, is the yarn that was featured to knit the sweater with. Let's see if you can... This yarn is so squishy and soft. So I knew that I wanted a really beefy yarn to knit the sweater with, but I didn't know if I was going to enjoy working with Beaver Slide Dry Goods. I think my first time hearing about Beaver Slide Dry Goods was um, through the Fat Squirrel Speaks. Um, Amy Beth loves this yarn, but she also loves knitting with, um, with hardier, more natural yarns. And I'm just starting to appreciate those yarns. So what I did was I just ordered one skein of this just to see what it would feel like. And I think I love it. And the price was amazing. Now, 
I did buy this from the clearance section of the website, Beaver Slide Dry Goods. And I was able to get this for $10.95 and it's 241 yards of worsted weight wool. And the color is Wood Smoke Heather. And this was an end of dialogue. But I can totally see myself buying a sweater quantity of this so that I can knit the ranch coat. So hopefully, probably no time soon will the ranch coat be on my needles, but I'm super excited to have found this yarn. This will make an amazing coat. It's got a lot of squish and structure to it, and it probably will be super, super warm. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to wait until the fall to cast this on because it's gonna be too hot to knit it in the spring. And then I also want to share with you these two skeins of Plymouth Galway Sport. It's a 100% wool. And I decided to, um, to buy these because I want to participate in the Knit Along with the Treehouse Knits vid uh, video podcast. Um, she's having a lot of fun knitting these Norwegian mitts. And Norwegian um, uh, two-color knitting is not something that I had on my radar to even uh, think about doing. But I just I love Rachel's podcast, and I love um, the excitement that she has generated uh, for that particular type of knitting. And I wanted to get in on the fun, so that's why I got these two. And I think they're going to make a beautiful pair of mitts, and. I have a lot of great things to say about the company I ordered this yarn from, but I can't remember the name of the company. So I will remember that for the next time I record because I hope these will be cast on because I really want to tell you where I got these from. The customer service was great, free shipping, um, quick shipping, and I love, love, love that. So I'll be sure to um, link to the yarn, the online yarn store, as well as talk about it. When I record next. And finally, the last acquisition I want to share with you is my Orange French Supply field bag. Woo -hoo. I already have one of these bags in, um, in gray. I think it's the charcoal color that I have. And I love it. I don't know what it is about this bag, except for I know what it is. It's very well made. It's sturdy. It's very functional. It's got pockets on the inside. And it's just beautiful in its simplicity. I think that's pretty much what it is. So I've already started filling it up with pins. These came in the mail um, not long ago. Look at my Elizabeth Zimmerman pin. Fat Squirrel Speaks pin. Oh, I love that. I love my pin from the Mirrored Bird Makery, which says, nevertheless, she knitted. And I love that because that's a constant reminder that just keep crafting, keep knitting through all the crazies, the crazy things that happen in life, how um, fortunate and blessed we are to have a craft that helps to carry us through. So I'm really, really excited to be able to say that I now own an orange French supply bag and I got this French Supply field bag, and I got this from Pearl Soho in New York from their web store online. I've actually got a ton of stuff in this bag that I could show you, but we'll save that for another time. Before I close, I promised you I would tell you about why I decided to name this podcast The Best Day Ever. The best day ever is like my personal, well it's not my personal, it's it's something I say a lot all of the time. I tend to get really excited about the things that I love and the people I love and um, so when something happens that I'm happy about, my friends know that's the first thing I'll say, best day, it's the best day ever. You can give me a tiny piece of candy and if it's something I love, it's like the best day ever. So the best day ever is about capturing all the wonderful things there are about life 
and really coming to appreciate even the little things in life and and coming to appreciate that life is not just about all the wonderful big things that happen to us. Sometimes it's about those little things and and coming to appreciate those little things that happen in, in life and what makes that the best day ever. Is that making sense? I hope so. Because what I would like to do is I like to award a prize once a month to some of you who also get that concept of coming to appreciate the little things in life, especially as it relates to crafting. So say, for example, we're not just the little things, the big things too. So say, for example, my best day ever moment will be when I release this podcast into the world. If I'm not too nervous enough to, to do that, um, because it is a goal that I've had for a long time, that would truly be a best day ever moment for me. What is your best day ever moment? Was it the day you conquered your fear and knit your first lace shawl? Was it um, when you finally uh, learned brioche? Um, was it something that's not even related to crafting? I'd like to hear about it because I just think that the more we come to appreciate uh, the small things and the big things and just all the wonderful things that life has to offer in general, the happier we'll be. There's a lot of things that we all go through, including myself, that aren't so happy. It's just been a really trying um, few years. I would say the past seven years has been really difficult. It just seems like one thing after another. Um, and I'm so grateful for what crafting has done for me. Not just crafting, but the crafting community. And um, and yeah, just crafting how it's had given me something to think about besides all the negative things that happen in the world and even in my own life. To just have something to sit back and to ground you in the evenings or just for a couple of minutes on a lunch break or whatever to be able to knit for a little bit. I just, I just, I love that. And I'm very, very appreciative of it. Um, those are my best day ever moments, really. So I will be starting a Ravelry group very soon if I haven't already started it by the time this podcast airs. And I want to, again, just hear about your best day ever moments. And we'll choose, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll choose one or two winners once a month. And um, let's just share with each other the things we're happy about, the things we're excited about. I think that's all I have to share with you for the day. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to uh, sit with me and listen to me as I share with you some of um, the things that have made me very happy in my crafting world this past month. The next time I record, I would love to share with you some of the goals that I've set for 2018 when it comes to crafting. And until then, I just want to leave you with the thought of uh, make time to craft every single day because I truly believe that every second, every minute, every moment spent crafting truly makes for the best day ever. Thank you for watching.